Welcome back to Class Guys. Today for surface design, we're going to be covering some calligraphy stuff. So, um, me, I'm a, I'm a purist. Me, I'm a purist when it comes to doing calligraphy and doing something uh, different. All right, so for me, I want to hand make all my stuff. Why? Because it's just always makes you more invested in the stuff that you're working on. That's kind of my thing. So, got some cans. We're going to be cutting them up with some scissors, and then we're going to use some tape to bind it all together to a wonderful paintbrush. Uh, so, I've got an old paintbrush where the bristles are kind of shot, and uh, let's just go ahead and take care of that now. So, save this, because you never know. You can always repair or use it for something else, so don't throw it away. Uh, but then we're going to take our can, we're going to do some stuff with it. Check this out. So we're watching a lot of videos uh, for calligraphy and one of the coolest things I've ever seen was the some of the videos by Seb Lester. But seeing him, the dichotomy between him and Casey Neistat was just a really cool. So for me, it's it's a very cool thing to see those those people working at, at, the, at the height of their field, doing some really cool professional stuff. So I figured, hey, let's bring that down to the educational level and get our high school students involved in creating some of these really cool designs that a lot of people are finding. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of money to be had. It's a lot of job opportunity to be had because you know people need that professional calligraphy style every so often to do letters, to do uh, just design work. It's, it's a good intro into graphic design itself. But I think that my students are getting the pull out of it because it's something new that they've never seen before. Uh, definitely as I'm showing them videos and I'm going over technique with them, it's something that a lot of them didn't know that existed. And I always think that that's interesting to see something that's so old school or something that's so traditional commonplace, having them kind of take new, have new eyes on that. I think that's always an interesting thing to see. All uh, right, so got some cans that we're gonna be slicing and dicing here so that we can make uh, a really cool calligraphy pen because I'm all for the homemade stuff, the homemade gear. And uh, we're gonna try and make these into some calligraphy pens. Now, for me, what I'm doing is I'm taking just an edge of my blade and I'm tapping it into the can itself. I might end up actually doing this for my students because I don't want anybody to get cut and I just can't trust any kid with a knife, right? So, uh, but I mean, that's that's kind of a, a, just a smart move, I think, as a teacher perspective. However, uh, because I mean, this this knife is cutting through this can like butter. But I don't want them to have that issue where they're gonna, you know, accidentally nick themselves. So I'm just gonna probably do this myself. One of the bad things that I'm doing right now is don't cut towards your hand. Kind of look front down, look frown. It's frowned upon in most places. So don't do that. Now I'm cutting mine in, in with two different cuts that can be pulled apart like this. Uh, main reason so that I can get around it easier. Also, you know, more you're gonna have you're gonna be making a few pieces out of this anyway, so I'm not really worried about not having one long sheet. Um, I would recommend that you try and get your students to bring in at least two cans each. Um, this is gonna be a big problem for people who have really large classes, like you know the the 40 in a class. Who thought that was ethically sound is beyond me. You know, because I have, uh, uh, got it. Okay, so anyways, back to what I was saying. So I have, um, I've had those classes where 40 is like the average. Uh, and then you have teachers who are out sometimes, so you gotta split a class and have more students than you should ever have in a single room because of a fire hazard. Um, we had one time that we had teachers out, I think, and no subs showed up because we were in a school where no one wanted to go. And that was, that was a big problem because if you have a, a place where the subs don't want to go because they're not valued, that's a, an administrative thing, uh, but it's also a county thing because then you're not trying to make a good situation, just, you're just making it worse. Where that was a, a kind of a thing, and then I had to have... 
between 50. They never had 60, but it was it was pushing it a couple times in one room. And in an art room, that's a real big concern because we have sharp things. And we're doing things that require, you know, space and safety. And it's hard to do anything in that. Oh, well, they can just sit there and draw. Well, I'm not being able to teach my standards. I'm not being able to do my thing if I'm having to fill in for somebody else who didn't show up for that day. Now, I'm not, I was never knocking my comrades. Now, me, I was never one to knock my comrades, my uh, my fellow teachers who were out for sick for a day. But you do have to think about those times when, because they're out, we have to pick up the slack. And it was not fair for us to not be able to have a sub because nobody wanted to come. Uh, it just made it so much more challenging. Luckily, most of us, because of the situation that we had, we had a really good scenario that we had very strong uh, classroom management skills. We had very strong checks and balances in, the, in there so that when a teacher was out and the, t and the kids knew that we we're all going to be lumped into one room, that A, it's not going to be a movie day. We're actually going to be go getting some stuff done. But here's the thing. Don't make us mad because it's not going to work out for anybody. So it was a benefit in that respect, but it was so much of a negative in that we didn't have those kinds of help that, that didn't have that kind of help or didn't have someone to support us because we were low on the totem pole. So now I got a couple pieces of sheet metal to uh, make my design templates on and I'm gonna trace these out and make some calligraphy pens. So I found this out, uh, well, I had this epiphany. I was like, hey, we have a slab roller. What if I took the slab roller and put the metal through it to flatten it out and guess what? nice thin sheet of metal uh, so if you have a slab roller put the metal through it make sure that you don't get pinched and I took mine that way when I am working I can um, I can set it at zero so then I have I can get that metal as flat as possible so that it doesn't get chomped up uh, and then it gives a nice little uh, little rivet pattern on the side of it too so while you're making your nibs or for your uh, calligraphy pieces just a quick tip if you got a slab roller roll your metal flat first just comes out a little easier I'll start with a starter hole so I can get my scissors into there to cut around the edge that rim. I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, working on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me. That's a new one for me. And Steam. Uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out. Like and subscribe. See you guys later. Next class. Follow. See you later. Next class. Do your homework.